Hello everyone, I'm unfortunately here to talk about a topic that we've covered before on the channel and I really wish that we didn't have to cover, uh, the theft of Star Wars fan art. So along with my own previous video, this was covered pretty in depth by Eckhart's Ladder on another video he did on the weekend as well as a previous series of videos and unfortunately probably more videos in the future from both of us. Uh, so I'm going to try to link as many of those previous videos as I can in the cards up there. Uh, so if you want to check those out for some more background, uh, his or mine, uh, check those out. But for this instance, a few days ago, a 3D artist in the community named Fractal Sponge, who you've probably heard of or at least seen some of his work, uh, he made a post talking about how one of his models, the Juggernaut, had been clearly used in the new Fantasy Flight Games tabletop RPG source book for the Clone Wars Collapse of the Republic. So these are his comparison shots here, and you can clearly see the same images are used. The renders that he put up on his site were basically taken directly, and same shadows, same plating, so you can tell 100% that these are the same images, and they were used in the composition of this scene. There are also others on Fractal Sponge's Discord who, ever since Fractal's post went up, have kind of come forward with... Uh, examples of their work being used either by Fantasy Flight Games or in other instances of official Star Wars media. So this is that was more of a private setting. I'm not going to show any of their examples directly. Uh, but I think between these examples from Fractal, the Marvel stuff that Ek and I have covered before, for the purposes of this video, uh, running down more and more examples is kind of unnecessary as far as getting to the broader point. This is a problem that has plagued Star Wars for a long time, and it's not really something that came in with Disney or in the last few years with work being used without credit or payment, but the responsibility does fall to Disney and the rights holders to try to implement some sort of system to make sure that the work that they're putting out is not just taking advantage of the work that is being done by other people. Uh, it's also their responsibility to make sure that the people who are making this art directly have adequate resources and have the proper references they're working off of when they're making new content, and that's something I'm going to talk about a little bit later in this video. So the point I'd like to talk more directly about before getting to the whole responsibility thing is really who cares. It's debatable whether the theft of fan art is directly actionable legally by the people who've created the fan art, especially since the existence of fan art in a lot of ways does depend on the allowance of the rights holders. So in my opinion, legal action isn't the best way to handle this. Uh, I don't know what appropriate legal action would be able to be taken by either side, and I'm not a lawyer either. So... Uh, my opinion on this part shouldn't really count at all, but uh, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, the other aspects of it. So for a lot of people, the response to the stolen content may be, so what? We still get these cool Star Wars scenes that we wouldn't have otherwise gotten, and sure, the artists are getting screwed over, but we may still get some cool content out of it. Probably faster than we would otherwise, too, if they were drawing everything from scratch. So my own perspective on this is that I've been involved in the modding community for a game called Star Wars Empire at War for about 14 years now. And like most modding communities, there has been, especially in the past, a lot of issues with asset theft between teams. So especially early on, like people would be making their own mods, they'd release them without permission from the people who actually made the assets. And there were some people whose response to this was, well, we got the mods, what do we care? Uh, if you have an issue with them using your work, that's your problem. But really, the effect that this has is a kind of chilling effect on the people who would otherwise be making those assets. They get tired of their work being used or misused without their permission, without adequate compensation, obviously for modding the compensation issue is a non-factor. But uh, it discourages them from wanting to work in that community anymore. And this is something that we are potentially at risk of with Star Wars fan artists. And especially when a lot of those fan artists are the people who would go on to make the official media later, this is really shooting, uh, as a community, this is shooting ourselves in the foot for the potential for future work. Fractal Sponge, for example, isn't just a fan artist. He's someone who has contributed official designs before. If you look at Essential Guide to Warfare, a lot of the new ship designs for that, uh, which have been widely used in Star Wars fan art since then, were designed by him. So on top of just the stuff that he does for his website, which I will link in the description, uh, he has made the Praetor, the, uh, the Asserter, the Bellator. He did the updated designs for the Nebula and Endurance. If these people get disillusioned, this is going to leave people who could be making stuff officially and who have a history of making stuff with Star Wars with a bad taste in their mouth. Now, this also means what we get as fans 
it is limited to what we can already get elsewhere as well. One complaint I have about a lot of the recent media that we have gotten is how rarely we get nice new fleshed out vehicle and ship designs. Now this is something that uh, Eck is also disappointed with a lot of the time as well. And frankly, I think this is a pretty big contributing factor. When we primarily get new artwork in a book through tracing, any possibility of new content uh, or even new takes on old content kind of goes out the window. So I personally really love the tabletop uh, setup that Fantasy Flight Games has. Edge of the Empire, Force and Destiny, uh, Age of Rebellion, I think it's called. I usually play the other ones, but I like I have a whole series on my gaming channel where we do uh, full playthroughs of tabletop campaigns in there. I've spoken before on this channel about uh, how much I enjoy playing it, how I think they're a really valuable part of the lore, especially contributing stuff to Legends when uh, at a point when not really anything else is because of when they started. Uh, and even some videos covering some of the issues that they've had in the past as far as staying afloat. And a lot of the art done in these books is actually freelance art, so uh, we're going to get to that in a second. But when... Uh, when tracing is how they get a lot of the artwork, then there's certain things that we used to get out of them that we probably won't anymore, uh, leaving aside any of the moral or ethical issues with stealing the fan art. I was personally hoping that uh, Rise of the Separatists and Collapse of the Republic, the two Clone Wars source books that came out uh, last year and this year, would include some designs for some ships that have been named in the past, even by Fantasy Flight Games books, but have never really received any official artwork. For example, if we had gotten a Maelstrom design or a Mandator design even, I would have thought that was really cool, but that would obviously require that the art be done specifically for those books. And I do want to be clear that we don't know who's specifically at fault for any given instance. There are a few cases that are a bit more clear than others, but I don't want to turn this into some sort of witch hunt for the individual artist or editor or whoever else. Uh, so the artist is ultimately the one who put it in, but there are plenty of reasons that could happen uh, validly. So for example, if you're making a scene for an official book, you're often going to be given official reference material. Uh, some of this intended to be like directly recreated. For example, Battlefront 2 uses a lot of models that are like direct, direct scans of movie props, and that's entirely valid. When you're using stuff that's within the Star Wars IP, officially sourced from uh, Lucasfilms, then great. That just means that the stuff that you're making is going to be more accurate. But for this image with the Juggernauts, uh, if the artist had been given a folder of reference material they were told to work on, they would have likely trusted their employer that, okay, this is all stuff that I'm able to use. But if fan art makes its way in there based on just stuff they were given by their employer, then how are they really supposed to know? It wouldn't really be on them as the person making the artwork to check each individual origin of the work, but as whoever curated that work it would be their responsibility to make sure that it was both taken from proper sources and used in proper ways. So it is clearly uh, a fault at some point, and there's a lot more due diligence that needs to go into these things. But again, I don't want to turn it into a specific witch hunt for a specific purpose. I don't think that'll be constructive. So ultimately, the bottom line is that we know the effects aren't good and that something needs to change here. There needs to be some sort of official response or uh, some change in the workflow, some change in the pipeline to make this stop being an issue, both for the good of the people who make the fan art and for the good of the future of the media that's going to come from this. Because again, if it's all just from tracing, then we're very limited in what we're able to get. Like if fan art completely dries up, where are they supposed to be getting this work from? That's kind of my takeaway from it is that Without the fan art, would then these projects not be possible? And if not, then you really need to be paying those fan artists. But either way, thanks for watching, guys. We're going to have a Tap Calf Transmissions episode, which is my Star Wars podcast with Eckhart's Ladder, coming up on Thursday on this channel at about 7 to 8 p.m. EDT. We usually plan day of uh, in case Eck has to do anything uh, those days. But we're going to be talking about Han Solo at Star's End and... Then in a couple episodes, we're going to be doing a topic, a topical episode specifically on this issue. So if that's something you want to hear about, uh, let me know in the comments. Also, if there's any other topics you'd like to hear me or us discuss, leave those in the comments as well. But thank you again for watching and hope to see you next time with hopefully something a little bit lighter.